Welcome to the Clarinet Podcast, the show about all that's new and neat with clarinet, with the neatest people in the industry. You can support the ongoing production of this independently produced program by donating to our Patreon at clarinet.com support. Supporters get early access to extended ad-free podcasts and exclusive access to patron-only episodes and live events. On today's episode of the podcast, I want to talk about a recent experience I had with selling my old clarinet. Now, when I did sell my clarinet, it got me thinking, how many people hold on to their old instrument as a backup, how many people can't let go, and how many people sell it for some reason after some duration? So I did a poll within the clarinet community on Facebook and discovered that the vast, vast majority of people, over 50 compared to only several votes for the other options, choose to always keep their instrument as a backup. So while I was kind of surprised by this result, I decided to weigh some of the benefits and negative elements of keeping an old clarinet around, especially the financial elements, which I don't think are often considered. You know, I have to preface this episode by saying this is not to be misconstrued as financial advice. I'm not a financial guru or whatever. Um, So please take this for just a discussion that it is. Before we get started, I do want to thank all those who are supporting the show on Patreon. We are up to 46 backers at the time of this episode airing, which is just fantastic. You'll remember a few months ago I was talking about trying to go from 1% to 2% listener support, and this means we're about halfway there. 46 backers represents about 1.5% of all those fans on Facebook supporting the show, and that is a huge achievement considering that 1% is sort of the golden standard for any sort of uh, production like this. So thank you so much for supporting the show, and don't forget that those who do do pitch in on Patreon, they get access to an extended ad-free version of the podcast every week with bonus lightning round questions for the guests. One more housekeeping detail. As I mentioned last time, I'm shutting down the online store at clarinet.com slash store. Everything that's not drop shipped. So you'll still be able to get t-shirts, mugs, hoodies, all that kind of stuff. But anything that I'm processing locally here in Calgary is going to be no more. So I might regret this, but I'm going to put out a coupon code on the show here just to try and clear out the last little bit of stuff. Um, So if you use code CLOSING25, that's C-L-O-S-I-N-G, Two five, you can get 25% off the remaining price of anything at checkout. So that includes sale items. If something's already half price, as a thanks for listening to the show, you'll get an additional 25% off. So uh, take advantage of that. Make me regret giving out that coupon here. <laughs> I better set an expiry. So let's say that that coupon expires on March 30th, 2019. Um, but while it's active, you can use it on any sale item. You can use it on a t-shirt, anything. Go ahead, use that coupon until everything else is gone, um, and uh, it will really help me focus more time on the podcast once I can clear out all that inventory and, and really organize myself in a better situation for the new year. And we'll get started with today's episode right after these messages from our sponsors. Thank you so much for listening. Hosting for Clarinet is sponsored by Bakun and their new line of Lumiere clarinets, barrels, and bells. Get 10% off your next accessory purchase by using code CLARINET at bakunmusical.com. Join renowned clarinetist David Schifrin at the International Clarinet Celebration in beautiful Portland, Oregon, June 24th to 30th. Hosted by Chamber Music Northwest, this event combines a full week of concerts by world-class artists like Corrado Giuffredi and Jose Frank Biester. There's also clarinet masterclasses, lectures, clarinet mentors amateur workshops, ensemble performance opportunities, a clarinet marketplace, and a young artist competition. Passes are on sale now, and you can learn more at cmnw.org. The Dario Woodwinds has an exciting new weekly trivia show called Don't Blow It. You can check it out every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern Time on their Instagram channel. And if you know the right answers to the questions, you might even have the chance to win some amazing new gear. By the way, if you haven't had a chance to try Dario's new reserve clarinet reads, you're in for a real treat. They're using some really amazing new technology and manufacturing techniques that are helping achieve super consistent results. You can pick up a box at your local music store or head to clarinet.com slash reads to buy a box right now. So today I want to talk about selling your old clarinet. And I know that sounds like kind of a silly topic, but the matter of fact is, is it can feel kind of like parting with an old friend. And I think that there's a right and a wrong way to do it, especially depending on who you are. So first, a little bit about my experience. So I got a new clarinet in January, uh, I believe about the middle of January this year. And I've been breaking it in, playing it, getting used to it. And basically, I finally got to a point where I was like, you know what? I have had my old clarinet for a really long time. It means a lot to me sentimentally. I mean, my whole career is in it. Basically, everything I've ever done or played or recorded over the past close to 20 years has come out of that instrument. And that's a really, as an artist, that's a really meaningful thing. 
um, it's so many hours of playing, millions of notes, um, everything that I've become was inside that clarinet. And it feels really weird to let it go. But something I learned recently, and this is um, those who follow me on Facebook will know that I'm a big fan of this uh, Marie Kondo book. I think it's called uh, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up or something like that. And it actually had a profound impact on me because one thing it talked a lot about was the importance of items in your past um, not necessarily having the same importance for your future. So this instrument, while it was so important to me, while it got me everywhere that I am, at this stage in its life, it, it would be best for me to sort of thank it for what it's done for me and get rid of it. Because this way, some other person is going to get the chance to use it, maybe save a bit of money on a new instrument and do something else with it, as opposed to it sit around in my closet as a backup instrument and kind of just go bad for the next 10 years until I chose to sell it or whatever. So for me, I also decided, look, I mean, I would, of course, rather have that money in my pocket or invest it and have it earn some income or something like that or pay off some debt or whatever you want to do than to just have this money invested sitting around in this clarinet that I'm not even playing anymore. So this became a, a sort of thing I thought about as well, especially with a you know new child in my, my household. So yeah, for me, I think that I just became the type of person who, although I thought I was very sentimentally attached to this clarinet, I started thinking about, well, what does the future hold? And this may be an end of an era, but I mean, maybe that's okay. So yeah, I said goodbye to my clarinet of, of 20 years and uh, I actually ended up just trading it in at a local music store. Um, I don't want to talk a little bit about why that is in a second, but for my estimation, there's four types of people and I want to talk about the different types of people a little bit who sell their clarinet or choose not to and why or why not these might or might not be good decisions for you or for, for anybody else. So the first type of person sells right away. The second type sells after some time. We'll talk about maybe why. The third type holds on to it for some reason, like maybe a utility reason, like a backup. And then the last type of person will never sell because of sentimental value. So let's talk about each one and sort of see where you, you fit in a little bit. The first type of person, they sell right away. And my estimation would be this is probably going to be a college student, um, somebody who desperately needs the money right away to pay off the instrument that they just bought. Now, this seems on the surface totally justifiable. I mean, you buy a new car, you trade in the old one, and you switch immediately. Um, the problem with this method, and, and unless it's an emergency financially, I, I really would advise against it. The problem with this method is twofold. First of all, there's no time to break in the new clarinet, which is very important, especially if you're a student and you're playing six, eight hours a day or a professional doing the same. Um, you can't just grab a new clarinet and play it like your old one. You've got to give it that time to ease into. Um, secondly, you need to figure it out musically. You need to get to know it. Um, you can't just switch like a light switch onto a new instrument and expect to get the same performance. You need to have a chance to sort of get used to the intonation, the way it plays. Maybe the key layout's slightly different. Maybe it doesn't fit in quite like you need to with your new ensemble, but you can use it at rehearsals for a while, but you're going to wait until you use it on a performance. All these things are worth thinking about. Now, something else that people probably don't think about is, what do you do if the new instrument ends up having some kind of uh, warranty issue or something in the first few weeks? Maybe you buy it and, and uh, one of the keys falls off and you have to swap it out with the manufacturer. What are you going to do while there's no clarinet in your house? So I think that the best situation for most people would be to sell around the three-month mark, at least, of owning their new clarinet. So they've had a chance to break in the new one. They have gotten kind of used to it. And it's a point where you could go, well, I'm done with it. And it's funny because I remember talking to Cornell Volak on the podcast and he had said that he changes out his clarinets pretty much every couple of years. And but you contrast that with some other people I've talked to. I think there's numerous ones who who basically say that they, they keep their old instruments and have a collection. So I guess there's just sort of two types of people there who do that. So the selling after some time, this could be a long time, though. You might decide for several years you want to have your old clarinet around as a backup. And this is also a pretty smart decision to, to do. You know, you've got an instrument that you're you're very used to and you have it around in case your other one needs to go into the shop or something like that. But but what I would say to that, especially for, for me in the past, is that I never had a backup for all those other years. I You know, I had a plastic clarinet just sitting around I could use in an absolute emergency. So, um, But there are some disadvantages to holding on to your clarinet. And these, again, I, I think a lot of people don't consider them, but the time value of money is 
very worth considering because if you have purchased a new instrument, let's say you've invested some money, like maybe eight or ten thousand dollars even into it nowadays, um, but you've bought a really nice clarinet and you've got your old clarinet sitting around, maybe it's worth twenty five hundred dollars or three thousand dollars or something like that, you're missing out on the fact that this money could be doing more for you than sitting in your old instrument in the closet. And I mean that in a very serious way. You may have student loans you're paying off. You may have some credit card debt. Maybe you've got a line of credit. Maybe you've got a car you could pay off, a loan. Um, usually these things have interest. And usually the interest is more than five, six, eight. Credit cards are close to 20 or above percent. So by having an instrument worth, say, $3,000 that you're sitting on that you technically don't need, you could really be shooting yourself in the foot financially. It's probably a better choice to pay off the debt that you have. Um, let's say you don't have any debt. Who cares? Maybe I should just leave it sitting around. Well, no. In that case, even then, you could take down that, that clarinet, sell it for whatever it's worth, and you could be investing that money into, God knows what, a mutual fund, even just a savings account, have a little bit of padding in your, your, your bank account, anything like that. I think this is a serious consideration for people that they often overlook. And it's something I would think about very deeply before you decide to get too nostalgic about your instrument. Like how much would you save an in interest at 20% a year if you had a credit card balance that was equal to your clarinet? It's a lot of money. <laughs> it really adds up fast. So I, I think that it's definitely worth considering, especially if you're in a situation like, uh, you know, me, for example, we've got this new new child and I was like, you know what, as much as I'd love to have this just kicking around as a backup for God knows how long, I just feel like this this money could be put to better use. So that was the decision I made. So the last category of person is the one who never sells. And it's funny because I think this might actually be the default category that everyone kind of falls in until they sell. And and uh, but, you know, you got to ask yourself, really, how sentimental is it? And And again, there's that consideration of the past versus future, like just because you use it in the past, does it have a place in your future? And I would seriously just sit back, think about that very deeply. And if you genuinely find that you cannot imagine your life without this old clarinet that you had, then yeah, I say probably keep it. But there's a point where there's just seriously diminishing returns on that. So, so now that we've got the four sort of types of people out of the way, I want to talk a little bit about selling it, like actually physically selling it. Um, some suggestions that I have. So basically there's a couple ways to sell a clarinet. One, you find a person, whether it's online or classified ads or whatever, you put up a price and uh, you negotiate on price and then you sell it. Now, that sounds very simple, um, but there's things that can complicate this. Like if you decide to list on eBay, it could go for less than you maybe wanted to sell. It could go for, you know, maybe you get more, but then you've got to pay a lot of eBay fees and shipping and maybe the buyer didn't like it. And maybe they claim it as a fraud and you lose the money. And there's any number of problems that could go on from selling online, especially to someone you don't know. But uh, even in person, let's say you wanted to get $3,000 and you can't find anyone to buy it. It just gets to a point where you could be spending 10, 20, 30 hours of your life emailing people back and forth trying to get top dollar for this clarinet. So my advice is if you're going to try and sell online, pick a price that is competitive enough to take your time into account. Um, if you think that you can get $4,000 for the clarinet and you're going to spend an entire year waiting for somebody, again, consider the value of your time and consider the time value of money. If you have a new clarinet that's on your credit card and you're waiting to pay it off and you're trying to nickel and dime the whole world to get an extra 200 bucks on your clarinet, it's a really bad idea. You should probably just take a little bit less and sell it to someone who will then, you know, technically get a better deal. But you'll get a better deal, too, because you're not having all that extra interest or you're getting to do something with that money sooner or you're not having to invest 30 hours. You could have spent practicing emailing people back and forth and fussing about the price or or features or texting pictures or whatever. So um, how did I decide to sell mine? Well, I did wait around for a while. I mean, I, I had it online. A couple offers kind of trickled in here and there. Um, and then I decided one day, I was like, you know what? I think I've given this enough of a shot. I probably could get a little more money, but I went down to a local music store and just traded it in. And I know I got a little less than it was technically worth, but, but here's the thing. I saved a lot of time and I've also absolved myself of the reality of selling something used, which is someone could come back to you and try to return it or, you know, claim that you frauded them or anything like this. So by selling to a reputable business, um, I just feel like I got it done in one go it took about half an hour and that was it. It's over. So 
to me, that has a lot of value, especially after having given it a you know fair shot for a couple months, listing it online and so forth. It just seemed like the right way to go. So th- that, that's not to say that that's the right way to go for you. If you're a college student and you have no debt and you're trying to sit around waiting for a top dollar to sell your clarinet, yeah, go ahead. If you're not in a rush, maybe it's been sitting around for a long time and you're really not in a rush to sell, then yeah, that's another consideration. You can just kind of hold out and, and wait. But uh, that was the decision I made. And honestly, I'm I'm pretty happy with it. So I think that's about all I have to say on the subject. You know, there's many considerations which people, they often, I think, just say to themselves, well, it means a lot to me and it was important in the past and I guess I'll just keep it. But I hope I've outlined some of the reasons why that may not always be the best idea. And also, I hope that if you're currently thinking about buying a new clarinet, that this might sort of push you in the direction of thinking you might actually be able to afford it. Because, hey, the money you've got invested in your current instrument is probably going to be a huge huge boost in helping you to afford a new one. So thanks so much for listening to the Clarinet Podcast. Uh, I invite you to send me your feedback on this episode. What do you do with your old clarinet when you purchase a new one? Send me a message at feedback at clarinet.com or leave me a voice message at clarinet.com slash voicemail. Thank you for listening to today's episode of the Clarinet Podcast. Show notes for this and all other episodes can be found at clarinet.com. While you're there, Don't forget to join our email newsletter for free updates, exclusive offers, and a chance to win giveaways. Guests, requests, listener feedback, and comments can be sent to feedback at clarinet.com. Special thank you to our season sponsor, Dario Woodwinds. Don't forget to check out their new show, Don't Blow It, on Instagram, and also try a box of their new reserved clarinet reads next time you're at the music store. The show is also brought to you by Chamber Music Northwest. With over $20,000 in prizes and world-class guests, artists, and vendors, Their upcoming clarinet celebration and competition is an event that you don't want to miss. Learn more at cmnw.org. Hosting for Clarinet is sponsored by Bakun and their new line of Lumiere clarinets, barrels, and bells. Get 10% off your next accessory purchase by using code Clarinet at bakunmusical.com. This program was produced and hosted by me, Sean Perrin, in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Music performed by Michael Lowenstern. Debate episodes co-hosted by Andrew Morrow. Audio editing by Brian Chappelle's and copy editing by Megan Taylor. You can support the ongoing production of this independently produced program by donating to our Patreon at clarinet.com support. Supporters get early access to extended ad-free regular podcasts and exclusive access to patron-only episodes and live events. That's all for now. Be sure to tune in next time for more of what's new and neat with clarinet with the neatest people in the industry on the Clarinet Podcast. <laughs>